We want to take you now to Clarksville, New York, where the Albany County Sheriff's Department is speaking to reporters about a criminal complaint filed against former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Let's listen. Investigation. As you know, early August, we received a complaint and a report was placed on file from a young woman who worked for the governor's office. Um, as I said, that following Saturday, our investigators were going to conduct a very comprehensive and methodical investigation. Um, we were not going to be rushed and we would not be delayed. So over the course of the nearly f four months to follow that, um, we have done just that, a very comprehensive and methodical investigation. Our investigators have sifted through hundreds of documents, if not thousands, executed several search warrants, and, exec and um, interviewed numerous witnesses, um, including our victim. As a result of all that information, a packet was sent down to Albany City Court for review. Um, as a result of that review, a criminal summons was issued. I will back up and talk about the review. That's standard in police work. Drop the information off. They'll review it. If there's any questions, they can call. Um, normally takes a little bit of time. This was this came back at a relatively accelerated rate, kind of caught us by surprise as well. And uh, needless to say, um, the document was then released to the media and posted online. So um, sometimes in police work with investigations, things don't go how you want them. Um, you've got to be ready to pivot, and that's exactly what we did. Um, so a criminal summons was issued. Uh, I would have liked to, at that point, um, had a deeper conversation with the district attorney. I would have liked to have reached out to Ms. Glavin, Como's attorney, and explained what was going on. But needless to say, the document was signed, the document was leaked. So again, things don't always work out as planned. So that's where we are today. Uh, Mr. Como is scheduled to appear November 17th in Albany City Court, at which time he will be processed and assumingly released. Any questions? You say it was accelerated. Um, so it was meant go this way, just was well, we had we had numerous conversations with the victim. Um, but we would have liked to have presented everything, sat down with the DA, explained exactly what we had. I would have also had a courtesy like to reach out to Ms. Glavin and explain what we had and what the next processes would be. Um, but again, things change and um, it doesn't always work out as planned. We've had conversations every day with the victim. Um, I have not spoken to the DA today, no. Do you have sure, a reaction sure. to what the former governor spoke with, with, with saying that you're in on some conspiracy against him? And, and we just said a few minutes ago, the fruit of the poisonous tree. That's a pretty good pun. <laughs> um, Listen, I, this is this is how they play. I mean, uh, you guys have been in the business. You've seen some of the tweets that come out of uh, come from Mr. Azaparty, come from the governor's office. Um, listen, this is my job. I'd rather they throw it at me than throw it and re-victimize the victims over and over and over. So um, I've been doing this a long time. I've been called much worse. Sure. Sure. Can you? Glad you've been called one of your associates in the council's office and asked about your reelection. Did you perceive that as threatening and or threatening? Well, as far as the election comment, I, I have no idea what that is. Um, I don't know if they were trying to muddy the water saying that this was an election ploy or something to that effect. I don't know. You know what? People always try to distract or detract away from the real, you know, the real investigation. And so I'm not really concerned about that. Um, we have a solid case. Um, our investigative staff did a marvelous job. I'm very proud of the work they did. Again, they took um, a very high-profile investigation. They methodically broke it down. And, um, and I couldn't be more proud of them. They executed a lot of search warrants. They went through a lot of data. And I would also like to say thank you to um, uh, Davis Polk Law Firm down in the city. Um, they were a very valuable and substantial um, asset to us during this, as well as the attorney, New York State Attorney General. And what will it take to have Mr. Cuomo convicted? And again, do you think this will go to trial? Why or why not? You know what? I, I don't know. I don't know if it'll go to trial. Um, I think we have um, an overwhelming 
um, amount of evidence. Um, we have a victim who's been cooperating fully every day, every step of the way. Um, as far as a conviction or something to that effect, that's really going to come down to, is it a jury, is it a judge, and, um, and as well as the district attorney's office. Sheriff, sure, 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 can you talk a little more about what happened yesterday? Is this basically a miscommunication that occurred? And, and also, can you talk a little bit about the evidence in this case? I know no. I, I mean that one uh, criminal complaint, there was a list of things, but mm -hmm. is there anything additional that you should I don't really want to get into the, the, do a deep dive on the weeds, on the investigation and the facts and the circumstances of the case. Um, as far as miscommunication, I don't want to say it was miscommunication. I will say that, again, we did not anticipate a quick return like that, nor did we anticipate everything would be posted on the Internet. Um, and again, and just out of common courtesy, we would have liked to have no made some notifications. Sir, I have two questions for you. One, uh, you said a criminal summons was issued. Who, who does the issuing in, in that case? Is it C judge? City court judge. The city court judge. Yes. And that happened how soon after you filed? Um, five, ten minutes. It, it, was, it was that quick. And yeah. that's unusual? Um, it's relatively unusual, yeah. Again, the Internet knew about it before I even knew about it. I was in my office. I received a phone call and looked on the Internet, and it was posted on the Internet. So um, that was a little bit problematic. Um, I think it was improper. Um, but again, sometimes things don't go as planned, and, um, and you've got to just roll with it and, and get ready to pivot and move on. And another question. So the, the complaint lays out a very specific day and a very specific time frame where this happened. The Attorney General's office struggled to nail that down. Mm -hmm. What was the, the breakthrough there? What, what allowed you to determine that day and that time? I got great investigators. I mean, is there any particular piece of evidence that, that helped? Well, again, um, I think there was a great focus on that date in the Attorney General's report. But if I recall, and you look at the footnotes, it goes on to say the, um, the, the victim is unsure of the exact date. And I think that was everybody just seized the opportunity to say it's impossible this happened because of that date. That's not really accurate. So uh, again, we executed a number amount of search warrants. Um, we had great participation with Davis Polk, and um, and we were able to nail it down and come up with the time frame. Sheriff, sure, both today and back in August. You had mentioned that it's really important to not re-victimize the victim at the time. Executive assistant number one was anonymous, but between now and back then, she's her identity has been made public. What would you say the effect was? Did it make the investigation more difficult now that the layer of protection that you had for the victim had been lifted? I don't think it, well, yeah, it did make it a little harder, um, but again, this person um, wanted to seek justice and has been with us every step of the way. Um, a number of calls have gone back and forth. And listen, this has got to be very traumatic for her. Um, I, it, it's easy for me to stand up here and talk about it, but I'm sure it's not for her. And, uh, and again, you know, we didn't want to, um, we just handled this like a normal investigation. And it's a misdemeanor. And misdemeanors aren't normally sat down and conferred with on every, every case, or there'd be no justice. So we handle this like we handle every investigation. And again, I want to put an emphasis on our victim cooperated every step of the way. Sheriff, I'm sorry, you just said that you're working with, or you had worked with Davis Polk, the law firm. Mm -hmm. are, that's the law firm that's also working with the Assembly Judiciary Committee. Are that's correct. Have you been working with the state assembly as part of their investigation on this? Not the state assembly, but the investigators from Davis Polk. Uh, we've conferred with them. We've had to share some information back and forth with them. Um, they were a, a very valuable asset for this investigation as well. Based on the, on the information they generated out of that? Some of the information they generated as a result of their investigation, the information that we resulted, uh, that resulted as a, uh, our investigation, and then we were sharing. And of course, we had the New York State Attorney General's report as well. Sheriff, sure, since, the, since the summons was issued, have you talked to the district attorney? Do you have his commitment that he's going to prosecute this case? Well, I, I feel very confident that the district attorney is going to prosecute this. And yes, I did talk to him yesterday afternoon. And how did that go? What, 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 was, what was said? What can you share? I can't share any of that. Sheriff, sure. 
you said that you were conducting your own investigation. This is a misdemeanor. You don't always consult with the district attorney over every misdemeanor, but this is obviously a little bit unusual in that it is, mm -hmm. you know, a misdemeanor sex crime against the former governor. Why not just consult with the DA before bringing the charges? Well, again, um, it's not that we didn't want to or tried to avoid that. We figured we had some time when the paperwork was down at Albany Police Court. That was not the case. And again, you know, it's it's unfortunate that it came so fast. But again, we things in, in criminal investigations don't always go how you want. So again, we had to get the we got it. We called the DA. Um, we had a conversation, and then um, we'll probably be meeting next week to go over. We we still have to turn all of our information over. Did you have any conversation with him before you filed about whether or not they would be able to prosecute? I had a conversation, no, not about prosecuting the case. I had a conversation with him a few days prior. And uh, when you sent down, just to clarify, when you sent down your investigator to uh, submit the paperwork, it was it was her intention to file the case, correct? Yes. Thanks. Sure, quick bill of form was, uh, the clock is not taken down to 15 days that prosecutors and the DA have to turn over evidence they've gathered on their own investigation to diploma. By moving forward and not having those conversations with the DA, do you feel that it's compromised any broader investigations or charges that the DA could have brought forward? Um, no, nothing's compromised at all. Again, our investigators did an incredible job on this. They spent a countless amount of hours, um, weekends, nights, sitting in here just sifting through, you know, pages and pages of information that was received as a result of warrants. And the clock has not started ticking because he has not been arraigned and will not be arraigned until the 17th of November. So, uh, and again, that date is, is a date that is relatively fluid. Um, I'm sure Ms. Glavin could probably reach out to the DA or the judge and change that date, um, move it up, move it back. You know, it's, um, that date was set by the court. But uh, at that date, uh, Mr. Como and his attorneys will come up um, into the city of Albany Police Court. Um, he'll be arraigned, and at that point, he will be processed um, probably at our headquarters in downtown Albany. What happens if he doesn't show up? Um, it's, you know, it's my hope that he shows up. I don't, you know, think he wouldn't. In, in, in a vacuum, a non-governor, non-former governor, doesn't, doesn't make their court appearance. What happens? Um, at, at that point, you could have a criminal arrest warrant issued. And that would, be a, that would be up to the judge. The judge may reach out, give him another opportunity. But at that point, I'm sure they would issue an arrest warrant. So you're very confident that the DA will prosecute this case, but did the DA indicate to you that he might want to, you know, have the charges taken back, maybe um, I don't know anything about any other charges. This charge, um, with the information and the evidence that was obtained, this charge fit. Um, you know, again, we didn't want to muddy the waters and throw a bunch of charges out there and see which one sticks. This charge fits the allegation and it fits the evidence that was obtained by our criminal investigators. Any reason why an indictment was made yesterday? Well, again, this is this is an uh, this is a misdemeanor. Um, the DA is conducting an investigation. He has an investigation separate and apart from mine. And again, we told, we told you, we told the public that we will conduct an impartial investigation and a very comprehensive, and that's what we did. We did not rush this, we did not delay it, we took our time and we went through it. And again, they did a great job with it. Would you say that your investigation is definitively over at this point? Um, we have a couple housekeeping things to keep in. Um, to put back in place, and again, people could call tomorrow with some new information. So I don't want to say that doors closed and we moved on. Um, I would say that you know we're we're going to sit back a little bit, see if um, any new information is generated. Every time that the media runs something on it, we get some information. Some we can use, some we can't use. Um, some is just background information. But uh, I would not want to stand here and say we're done and you know we've moved on. Um, we didn't serve subpoenas. We served search warrants. Um, but I really don't want to get into the into discussing any of the facts around that at all. Chief Hawkins said that they were not involved at all. At any point, would you need their assistance? Um, um, if they have something to offer information, sure. But at this point, no. When, when would you have wanted that summons to be? I mean, this, it went out sooner than you would have liked. When would it? What was your goal to have that? that when was your goal for that uh, summons to go 
Um, n not yesterday afternoon at 4 o'clock, I can tell you that. I mean, how long? I, I really don't want to get into that. It's, it's, it's really I not. I think you had mentioned on the radio this morning that you had some sort of meeting scheduled with, with the DA for next week. Were you hoping it was that bad? Uh, the signing of it after that? Well, just, I mean, anything. The signing of it, the fact that it gets public. I mean, were you hoping to brief the DA at that meeting yes. before it came up? Prior to that, yes. Yeah. And again, out of common courtesy, I would like to reach out to Ms. Glavin and let her know what was going on. You know, we kind of got sandbagged ourselves, and and, and I feel that, um, you know, I, I kind of felt bad about the way that it all happened. But again, the way it went down has nothing to do with the case. The case is a very solid case. We have great information that was obtained. We've May, we met our burden as far as probable cause, and we have filed. So whatever and however it went down, again, I would have liked to have seen it go differently, but it didn't. So here we are. We talked about this in August, and I'm going to ask you the exact same question again. How can you ensure the public that the motivations behind your office's actions were not political in nature? I don't even know what that means. You know, every, I've been accused on Twitter all night about this is a political hit job. Why? How? How is, this, how is the Albany County Sheriff doing a political hit job? That is ridiculous. We are an apolitical organization. Maybe you folks aren't from the area, but the people in the area, uh, they're pretty sure that it's not a hit job. We do our investigations. We're a very professional agency. And I took an oath, and we took a complaint. And we followed through with it, and we did like every other police, police department and sheriff's office should have done. Devil's advocate, not saying it makes sense, but you're elected, so there could be some mental gymnastics involved there that could connect political ambition of some sort. I'll worry about that when I announce my re-election. Anything that happened yesterday could complicate the case going forward, i.e., could, could it be something that is no. used by either the defense or by the prosecutor no. to, to end this case? No. Not at all. Uh, Sheriff, you mentioned that you had communicated with the uh, Attorney General. How, what, what sort of communications did you have with her and how recently? How early, how recently before the filing of the doctor's That um, I didn't communicate with the attorney general, the attorney general's staff, their investigators. About? Their report. I see. And um, just to confirm, when you generally have different cases, not this one, um, is, it, is it your usual practice to file separate charges or separate cases? Or do you have to file the case separately? If we consulted with the DA on every single misdemeanor case, there would be no justice in this county. Um, Arrests are made every day. Arrests are made in this department every day without, without me knowing about it. Um, again, would I have liked to? Absolutely. And, uh, but I, I couldn't. All right? everything, everything moved too fast. Um, so again, sometimes it doesn't end up how you want it to. But needless to say, as far as the case goes, it has no effect on the case. The case is a solid case. Our victim is cooperative. And we're moving forward. But you would have liked to have been able to yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would have liked to. Yeah. In a cosmic sense, can you say personally that it's important that justice is served in this matter, not because this person is and was an elected official, but in spite of the fact that this was a powerful person at one point? Daryl, we handle every investigation the same way. Um, are there a few variables that come into play sometimes? Yes. We knew everybody would be watching this investigation. You know, I'd get, I would get calls on a daily basis. You know, when is this arrest going to happen? And we're like, we don't even know if there is an arrest. You know, we have to go through the information we have. We do, we try every single investigation to be conducted the same way. And our primary goal is to protect people and protect the victims and the complainants. And it's an important to do that. I think there's been enough trauma dispensed throughout this entire you know, circus since it started. And um, I, I give these women a lot of credit, um, but also, you know what, we had a job to do and we did it. Sheriff, would Attorney General Letitia James have known that you were going to file this complaint before she decided to be officially announced two months ago? No, I have not spoken to the Attorney General. I have not discussed with anybody outside of our staff that this arrest was going to take place and the filing was going to take place. Aside from how information was disseminated yesterday and maybe or maybe not the uh, anonymity reveal, is there anything that you would have liked to have seen differently as far as the execution from beginning to end with investigation, the media even? Uh, no. 
Not really. I, I think, again, I think everybody was fair. I mean, we'd, I'd get calls from media on a daily basis. Um, every Monday, I'd get um, a text from Bernadette. You know, where are we? And uh, But um, I think, you know, all in all, um, we did exactly what we needed to do, and we had the resources to do it. Um, I got calls from legislators, our legislators, um, you know, if we needed anything. Um, I've, got, I've spoken with the county executive. If we needed anything, we knew this was going to be a big undertaking. We knew it was going to be a relatively expensive undertaking. Um, but again, you know, what do you do? You put a dollar on, uh, on the person, you know, that's filing the complaint? I, you can't do that. Sure. We're an agency that I think has proven itself to take care of people, and um, that's what we did here, and we're going to continue to do every day. Sheriff, do you know if the summons has been served on the government yet? No, it has not. It has not? When, when do you expect that to happen? Um, probably early next week. We were uh, we were actually just talking about it a few minutes ago. And, and what happened in that situation? Is it Albany County Sheriff's Office that would, would serve that summons? Is it yeah, but we'll also we'll we'll speak to Miss Glavin and figure out a way to um, you know I don't know if it's going to be just him or if it'll be to her. Um, and we haven't really worked that out. I mean, with that, I, I think you used the word arrest, but I think you may have been responding to a question. Is arrest an accurate word. Is the governor going to be placed under arrest at some point? Yes. Yes. You mentioned it being an expensive undertaking. Did you figure on how? I, I haven't even gone there as far as, you know, at to totaling anything up. And, and listen, this is, <laughs> we're only at like stage one. So there's a lot more to come. So um, I, I don't know. But again, Listen, you can't put a value on, on somebody filing a complaint. So we did what we needed to do. We did it professionally and thoroughly, and I'm very proud of my staff and, um, and, and the support that they were given. Sorry, not to belabor this point, but if you wanted to you know, have this moment to converse with the DA, why not have that conversation before you filed the documents? The documents, initially, we thought the documents were going to be re reviewed, all right? So that's, it's very simple. We thought that we weren't expecting a five-minute turnaround. So we got a five-minute turnaround. So we had a meeting scheduled with David, and um, needless to say, we couldn't have it. And, um, and we have a criminal summons. So again, I've said it a thousand times, we, you know, we didn't plan it, but it's the hand we were dealt, and we're going to deal with it. We filed the paperwork looking for which process we should follow. Would they want to issue a criminal arrest warrant or a criminal summons? Okay, were there any attachments to any of the documents that would be... Yesterday we got copies of the summons, and then we got the bunch of other documents that they couldn't release. Right. The public, why is that, and do you plan on releasing those pre- uh, No, I didn't even want that summons released. I think it was improper that it was released. I don't agree with that at all. And again, we could have put the brakes on everything had that not occurred. But needless to say, it was posted on the internet, and here we are. So we had to kind of pivot and move on. But I don't think those documents should have been released till after an arraignment. And I just, that's my opinion. Um, I think there's a lot of other people that agree with it, but it happened. I didn't know it did. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that. I think the document got leaked initially to some, to another um, news outfit outlet, and everybody else saw that, and then everything broke loose from there. Anything else? Thank you. And you've been listening to the Albany County Sheriff, Craig Apple, discuss the criminal complaint against former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. He says the summons was made public much earlier than he planned. He read it on the Internet before he'd released the information. Regardless, Sheriff Apple says they have a solid case, an overwhelming amount of evidence, and a cooperative victim, and they are moving forward. Sheriff Apple says he's proud of his investigative team, which he says took a high-profile investigation and methodically broke it down. Former Governor Cuomo is scheduled to appear in court next month.